10 tips for gigging guitar players. So here are 10 tips for guitar players that are gigging a lot or you're going to start gigging a lot. Things that may seem obvious but that are easily overlooked and that you may not think of. So hopefully you'll find it useful. So tip number one is for guitar players that use an amp and they use the effects loop in the amp. If you don't use the effects loop then just go on to the next tip but this is the first tip. So, effects loops on an amp are normally pretty close together. The effects loop on your pedal board, because obviously you've got to send and receive on your pedals, are a lot further apart. So what I've done to make it easier when I'm trying to put my leads into the back of my amp, especially when you're in a place which is badly lit or it's pretty dark, is I've cable tied my leads together for the effects loop and on the end I've put an R for the return and an S for the send. I've taped that on there so that in the dark or not even necessarily just in the dark but at any time I can see exactly which one goes in where. So this end is cable tied quite close together because that's the end that goes in the amp so um, they're quite close. The end that goes in the pedal board has a lot more room because obviously it's, it's wider. Now if you don't want to cable tie them together and oh yeah you want to do make sure you do the same thing on the other end as well. Um, if you don't want to cable tie them together another little tip is to take two different coloured leads. So for example, you may have a red lead for your return and a black lead for the send, but the red and return you, you will trigger you to remember. The reason I do this is because when you're playing at a venue and it's dark and you're trying to, and there's quite a long distance between your amp and your pedal board, sometimes it's a pain in the ass trying to find the lead which is going into which. So that is just a little quick tip that might help you with that little problem if you call it a problem. So why bother cable tying them together? Why not just have two leads? Well I just found it easier because it's like just having one long lead that does both your send and return um, and it just makes it easier when you're packing up and setting up and stuff like that. Tip number two is to get one of these little fold out trolleys. So folds out, wheels on the back, extendable handle, and you can get up to 80 kilograms onto here. Now a couple of weeks ago I had a gig in Portsmouth. I had to park literally about half a mile away from the venue. But I loaded this up and just wheeled the stuff down the road. Much easier than carrying a 50 watt head and a cab half a mile down the street. So that will save your back and uh, yeah, that's tip number two. So tip number three is make sure that you always have a spare of anything that is essential to the job. So a spare guitar, a spare amp, spare cables, um, spare pedal board, sat power supply, those sort of things. The last thing you need is to get to a gig and find out that the thing that you need desperately to, in order to play doesn't work. And this has happened to me before. Luckily I had a spare, everything was okay. So make sure you have spares. Tip number four is make sure you have some tools. So just the basics, the screwdrivers, pliers, um, some gaffer tape, some cable ties, all the little bits and pieces that you, you know, sometimes need at a gig. So if something goes wrong, you've got a tool. I find these little uh, multi-tools quite useful. So it's got a bit of everything in there, screwdrivers, pliers, etc. But I also do take some regular tools as well. It doesn't have to be a whole toolbox, literally just three or four little things to cover the most basic of problems. Tip number five is these little Velcro ties, they're really handy. So I use these to tie my cables together when I'm packing everything away to keep it all neat and tidy. But you can also use it to, cap um, to tie things up at the gig. You know, if you need to get cables all streamlined across the floor, they're really handy for that sort of thing. And, uh, and you can just take them off again at the end of the night. One thing I always do is, rather than use them around that way, 
I always make sure I use them inside out because the if you if the cable's going in here, it's got the soft side in the middle rather than the rough side, which over time could damage things. So I always use the inside. But yeah, they're quite handy little things. Tip number six is make sure you get paid before you play. Now depends on how you structure your band whether you've got a management company that does all that and you just get paid by them or whatever but if you're getting paid at the gig make sure you get paid before you go on because we've had situations where the end of the night comes you're trying to find the promoter they've done a runner or they've disappeared or nobody can find them and you end up going home with nothing i've done gigs where we got paid nothing but we knew that going in but if we're due to get paid by the venue, always get paid first. If you're playing a gig at, for example, a festival or in a marquee in the middle of a field or something like that, two things I'd recommend taking are a tow rope and jump start cables. And I've had the experience where it's got to midnight. When we arrived at the venue, it started to rain. By the time we left the venue, it was absolutely hammering it down. What was a nice field when we arrived was just an absolute mud bath when we left and the whole band got stuck in the mud. Luckily, one of them had a tow rope and somebody who owned a 4x4 gave us all a lift out of the field, which was very nice of them. But if they hadn't have done, then we would have ended up spending the night in a field, which is not ideal. So if you're playing a gig like that, make sure you have a tow rope and jump lead cables because if you don't, can't start your car, again, you're going to be spending a night in a field, which you might like, but I don't. I'd rather be at home in my nice, warm, comfortable bed. Tip number eight, have some earplugs handy. So you may or may not usually use earplugs. However, it has happened before where I've been at a gig. I haven't worn earplugs because I don't normally wear them, but for some reason, there's a frequency that is just killing my ears or something's too loud and you can't just stop and turn things down you have to carry on going so in between songs you can just quickly slip some earplugs in so have them handy like on your amp or in your pocket or something like that the ones that i have found the best and i've used loads of different earplugs i've had custom made earplugs i've used the cheap ones off ebay the ones i found the best are these and i don't get these for nothing i pay for them so this isn't a paid endorsement, I'm just telling you what I found the best. So they're ProGuard Lin Ear PR20. So I keep them on my keyring so that I've always got them. And these are great because I can use these, I can still hear everything. The tone of my guitar sounds just as good, but it just reduces the volume. Most of the earplugs I've used, they just cut out all the nice frequencies, so everything sounds like crap. But these ones were really good, so I've bought a few pairs in case I ever need them. So uh, yeah, have some earplugs handy because you never know when you're going to need them. Tip number nine, arrive early for the gig. So many reasons to do this. Number one, you get a parking space or you're a lot more likely to get a parking space. Secondly is you can check out the situation at the venue if you haven't done this previously. So you may find that they've got a sound limiter there and you need to change the way you're going to play or you may find that there's only one plug socket so you've got to go and find a plug somewhere else and run some electricity through multiple rooms or you may get there and find it's a really difficult loading or you may get there and realize that you can't park anywhere near the venue so it's a half a mile walk which is what happened to me the other week so many reasons to arrive early so that you're not rushing around like a blue ass fly trying to get onto the stage before you are due to play so yeah, that's tip number nine. And tip number 10, take a paper and pen with you to your gigs. Now this depends again on what sort of band you're in. If you're in, for example, a metal band and you have a specific set and you've got a half an hour slot, you're probably not gonna need that. But if you're in, for example, a function band and you, know, you turn up at a wedding and then all of a sudden the groom will say, ah, oh, I want us to play this song because my brother's turned up and he's gonna sing it and you don't know the song, you can quickly write down the chords or the lyrics or you can write down the names of people that want a special mention and stuff like that because sometimes they'll say, oh, can you give a mention to blah-de-blah -blah and blah-de-blah because -blah, it's their 50th anniversary. 
and you've got an hour and a half before that, it's easy to forget. So take a pen and paper just to write things down if you need it. Sometimes you won't need it, but every now and then you will. So those are my 10 tips for gigging guitar players. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give me a like and subscribe and make sure you hit the little notification bell so that you get told when I release a new video. If you didn't find it useful, oh well. You've wasted a few minutes of your life. Sorry about that. Bye.